it's such a pleasure to be here with my new friend, Lawrence Ford, who I met in Yannick Silver's On Degree Network. There's this gathering of extraordinary individuals with the idea, um, the mission of the One Degree Network is to nudge the consciousness of the world by one degree. <laughs> so, Lawrence, it's just so such a blessing to connect with you. And um, and after we we met in that in our last session, you had reached out and uh, you had shared. Uh, that you also felt that we were kindred spirits and you're doing some amazing work in the world. And um, you have a wealth management company called Conscious Capitalism. And you've also got a very significant initiative going on with uh, the UN called Future Capital. So I would just invite you to, you know, share, um, perhaps we can start in relationship, what you resonated with most on our call together and then we can just thread into the unfolding of our collective passions and, um, and see what unfolds. So the one part that I will add to some of the things I do out there in the world is I also um, work with people through transition and crisis primarily, but really all about moving deeper into their power and their purpose and their passion. Mm and their reason for being here in this world, which is really my reason for being here in this world is wow. to raise the level of consciousness through my own being first, yes. but to remind everybody that they are here for a reason and what their gift is, is so special, like a snowflake, no pattern is the same. Yeah. And that they have, we all have a very simple, but sometimes challenging task in this world is to live that and to align our being with our doing. And when we do, as you know, Daniel, we make beautiful music and we attract synchronicities and we live like what I talk about in my book in the fourth season. And when we don't, um, you know, we're out of harmony and we're out of synchronicity and we're out of sync inside ourselves. And when we're in that place, we, don't make such good music. It's like when you hear a um, when you when you hear a um, a tone that's um, not out of you know it's out of it's out of chord. It's out of sync. It's out of tune. Yeah. And you know, for a while, we can go through our lives ignoring that, talk quietly away, uh, until that day. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but you know, when we the reason that's my mission in life is for many reasons of un unfolding in my life, but. The main reason is quite simple, is that, you know, we all deserve world peace. Yes. And that comes from first being in an inner peace. And the only way that we get inner peace is allowing ourselves to be fully ourselves yes. and sharing that with the world. And when we do, we're in this great, great place. So actually, my, my mission is entirely selfish because yeah. I love my world and I love being uh, around people who I become attracted to and vice versa, like you, Daniel. And um, there's no reason why the rest of the world shouldn't be living like yeah. this and being in this type of harmony and, and bliss. And it's not like, you know, this, this type of, as you know, you know, um, unicorns and rainbows and yeah. fuzzy kittens type of uh, um, existence. You know, it's all there for us when we're awake in the fourth season. And um, then we get to see synchronicities like this. And I will answer your question now. Ready? So you come on. I'm going to give you a play-by-play -play from my point of view, okay? So I'm on with Yannick with all these incredible, beautiful people. I'm going to give, I'm going to give you a little play-by-play -play inside this cabbage here. Right? Okay. <laughs> right. so I'm sitting here and I'm like, I'm in this mode of, okay, I'm going on to Yannick's call. I'm in this semi-type of guilt you know, like when you take time off of work and you know you should be working, but you should take time off, right? That whole internal dialogue. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, well, okay, relax. You do this for yourself, Lawrence. This is good. It's all good. So just chill out and have fun for this hour and a half. And then you come on. And I'm thinking, you start to tell the story about what you're going to do for this workshop with us. And I'm listening. And you start describing almost identically and i'm not being over dramatic here okay yeah almost identically a workshop that we do 
Mm. So my ego starts first, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm human, Daniel. So I told you, <laughs> warning signs, you're inside the cabbage now. So I, I started thinking to myself, well, Yannick, how come you got Daniel instead of me? <laughs> uh, <right. laughs> I let, trust me, I let that go pretty quickly. Yeah. So I sat there and I leaned into it and I'm listening to you and I'm like, wow, okay, well, yeah, I got it. Very cool. I'm going to relax beautifully into this because there's probably, I'm sure, and this is like, you know, thank goodness for the work that I've done on myself and what I do for my own world is I can, as the shamans say, stalk yourself and watch yourself. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you can correct yourself before you fall into those patterns. So I was very present with you and watching you and knowing that you were about to teach me something of which I wasn't sure yet, but I knew this wasn't happening by chance. And then you say, and you know, but this, I'm going to start this a little bit different where I'm going to tell you about my own experience that happened to me a couple of weeks ago. Right. You with me? Yes. And I'm wondering so, if I can just, just pause for a second, because I want people to know that what, what we're talking about is in the playlist that this is, this is the workshop that we're talking about on, on day 32, Awakening Conscious Leadership with Yannick Silver's One Degree Network. Perfect. Okay. So then, sorry, sorry, audience, if you're <laughs> listening now, but back inside the cabbage, ready? Yeah. Here we go. So play by play. So I'm saying, okay, this Daniel dude's got it going on. And this is beyond synchronistic because I would say 90% of your workshop, maybe, I mean, give or take, is exactly, when I say exactly, exactly, all the way to the breakout rooms and the discussions afterwards of how we do it. Mm, amazing. So I'm thinking, okay, spirit, let me have it, baby. And you come back again, say, I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to actually... And you didn't even say different because I was listening so carefully. You said, and I'm going to take you into something happened to me a couple of weeks ago as an example of this. Mm. So inside cabbage, ready, Daniel? It goes, well, that's a mistake. I would never do that. <laughs> mm. oh. Right? Because I wouldn't want to frame, you know, for other people, my experience, right? Little did I know what was coming. Mm -hmm. So it was such a beautiful lesson of being present, watching my egoic mind, watching my reactions and being with you as a teacher, teaching me something. And then you come in with what happened a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And for if your people are listening, you know, I'll, I'll give you my interpretation of it, which was basically that you went in and you got a call from your doctor that said, you know, there's some bad stuff going inside that head and it's not good news. I basically, Daniel said, you know, when, when it's an incredible thing, what happens, and I'm sure you're well aware of this and versed in this, but when something happens to the rational mind, that's beyond its ability to grasp it, the mind starts making up stories, mm. right? So my story was totally irrational. Nothing personal was Daniel, that's not that's you how could you make up a story like that mm. i couldn't i couldn't grasp the fact that even though i knew intellectually i was there with you that it was real i couldn't grasp the fact that i'm going through this lesson from you a master about a course that i teach just like this and you just happened to have this experience two weeks before or whatever it was before this and it is the most profound example that anybody could ever make up mm. of an example of how to come into this fully into this workshop so i'm wondering because i'm mindful that people are are listening and to, to provide a little bit more specificity lawrence if we can serve our if we could serve you listening so this was the workshop that we did and it you know in the workshop we did and my methodology leads from the world of appreciative inquiry and i've learned this methodology from um, the exchange community led by john Berghoff. and it's it's a process of choreographing rich conversations rich conversations internally and rich conversations externally so 
what um, we did um, was appreciative inquiry um, is a methodology of conversation that's based on, founded by David Cooper Ryder um, in 1982 when he went to Cleveland Clinic and he asked what, he went in as a consultant to speak to the medical executive group and, and most consultants go in asking the questions, what's wrong over here and how can we fix it? Um, and David rather went in and he found himself just serendipity as noticing things that were going right. And he asked the question, this is what he know. He asked the question, when you ask folks, what's going right? What is, you know, what are you doing well around here? The whole system comes alive. The whole system comes alive. You begin to unlock individual and collective strengths. And so we came up with this methodology that's been used actually in the United Nations, Google, Facebook, and many, many organizations have been using this to unlock individual collective wisdom at scale. And it's been said that appreciative inquiry is the best of what was, is, and could be to unlock human strengths and flourishing. And so what I did was we set up, there's a choreography of question, and then there's a choreography of breakouts, moving peop in, people in and out of conversation. And so what we did, we set up the questions, and then I'll just share the choreography. There's a, a number of foundational questions, um, and each of them are, you can say a number of these questions involve questions where you actually explore into the past to clarify the present and to imagine a better future. So it's been said that appreciative inquiry is the best of what was, is, and could be. The question, because we're in the one degree network, the way we frame the question. The past question, the past question was exploring a question of awakening. So, and I, I think I asked the question in the form of, when in your life have you had a significant challenge that helped you awaken your consciousness or your conscious leadership more fully? So it was a story of awakening to invite you to reflect on a story of awakening of your conscious leadership. And then um, moving from there into the present to explore what does that clarify? What did that, what was the learning that you had then that helped you kind of understand and clarify your superpowers now? So what are your awakened superpowers, strengths, guiding principles? What are those superpowers now? And then from those superpowers, what is your gift to the world? How are you living that gift into the world as you think into the near or long-term future? And so what we did was there's a choreography of moving people in. The fastest way to psychological safety in a group, and we're on Zoom over here, is a choreography of one, two, and then many. So the first thing that we did, I gave we all, I gave everybody a, you know, two or three minutes to reflect on these questions. So that's the one. We put in some journaling music. We, we reflected on the question. And then I invited, I invited everybody into this choreography and it's what's called a paired interview. So it's in a paired interview. We went into breakout rooms of two. And the paired interview is where it's not a conversation. It's an interview where Person A is the interviewer and asks, we take 10 minutes to ask those three questions and give in 10 minutes, giving the interviewee a chance to answer. And then the interviewer gives a reflection back. The key over here is the reason why we're doing it as a paired interview is we wanna put people in a choreography of receiving and giving love. And that cultivates deep psychological safety. So they're not only asking the questions with a form of the questions, they're opening, the interviewer is asking the questions from a place of openness, kindness, and curiosity. And then after they've answered this 30 second reflection back, I would come to you and if I was interviewing you, Lawrence, I would say, Lawrence, what you have just shared with me what I am most inspired by. Thank you for sharing what I am most inspired by, what you are sharing, what do I most appreciate about you and what you've just shared is. 
And that's when you feel, you'll feel deeply received. And then we switch. We switch in the other direction. And then when it come out to the large group sharing, it becomes a love fest because the way I actually unpack the large group sharing is I invite people to actually share what they most appreciate about their partner. And then it becomes a love fest. And then I invite you to share about what was your insights about yourself and what was the insights about the process. And oftentimes the insights about the process, I can't believe how on Zoom I was with a total stranger and how quickly we dropped into intimacy, how quickly I found a sense of deep safety and community. And then we actually did another piece with a gift to the world. We then started actually co-creating and supporting each other on those gifts to move into the next phase and that you know that was the magic that was the magic of the process and what I shared in my story of awakening I shared my story of awakening was my cancer that's what I was sharing I sh and, I, and I wasn't sharing my the reason why I was sharing my story was simply as a thought jogger yes to allow you to actually, it wasn't about my story. It was about me serving as a thought jogger to help you clarify your story of awakening. I was only using it as an example. And you did it perfectly, Daniel. It was, it was a perfect bridge. Yes. Yeah. And my story of awakening briefly, I was diagnosed with brain cancer on November 12th. And when I came up, went up to the room, I learned my pivot point was knowing that questions create worlds. And when I noticed my, the cab, my cabbage going into a world, my, the default questions in the brain are questions of safety. So it's what if and all the catastrophes that could have happened, what's going to happen with me and my family. So I'm going down to this world of pain and suffering, but that's what my brain is geared to do. And with mindfully, what I did was, and through the gift of being in this appreciative inquiry community, the, the exchange community, I was primed to actually come up with a generative question. And my generative question was, what matters most now? And what that cascaded into is make every moment count. And then was about living intensely loving relationships and leave a legacy with my work. And so my awakened superpower was an understanding that I can make glorious beauty out of suffering. And then my gift to the world is this living well from within channel is this living well from within channel? So that's how it cascaded. So I'm, what I trust is that, and I only spent five minutes on that yes. to, to set that up because I wanted everybody to have their experience and actually unpeel into their story. So I'm, I'm actually curious, would you be willing to share how you answered those questions? Because clearly, you know, on, one, on the one hand, you do this workshop, but you've come to, your gift to the world is doing the same a similar workshop, right? Yeah, absolutely. What was your story of awakening to get there? And what do you feel your awakened superpowers are for you to do the work that you do now? I would love, I would love for everybody to learn about, would it be okay to share that? Of course, that's my yeah. life, right? Yeah. How could we not share that stuff yeah. with each other, right? Absolutely, Daniel. So um, let me start by saying, uh, framing it a little bit, Daniel. First of all, thank you for doing that again. Yeah. And to the degree without any ego involved here, um, I know that you know, part of your awakening of your legacy, in some small little way, I will carry forward with you forever because of this work that we do together with this incredible experience that we take people through. And I am better, so much better for experiencing it on your side because I learned from you and thank you for that. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll play with that for, for a long time, I'm sure. But in the meantime, I just wanted to make that conscious that I will carry those forward, that forward for you for a long time. And, um, you know, maybe have some fun uh, naming it that or something. <laughs> I'll have fun with that. Creativity is not an issue for me, but I like that idea so far. I'll keep it working. Um, and then also this, my book, The Secrets of the Seasons, which has been my gift of which tells my whole journey and answers all those questions in detail. Um, and also frames, which is, I, I will get specifically to answer your question, but I wanna make the connection of my work a little bit with yours while we have this precious time together. Can I just ask, you've, 
that I'm noticing that the Secrets of the Seasons is sitting on top of a couple of artifacts. Yes. And I'm wondering as you're going through, if you would if you would be willing to share what those artifacts are and how they thread into perhaps into your journey. So um, I if if they do. If oh, of course could. they do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love that question. So let me go quick and then I'll go right into the story. And I'll yes. start over here because I love your intuition. Yeah. Um, so my book basically outlines not only my life, but a new um, systems way of thinking and living, which is basically framed in a very simple way, which is called the, the seasons of life, the four seasons. I'm going to go through them really quick because that's not what this call is all about. Yeah. But you'll see where it weaves into the, the, the workshop. So season number one is a season of, uh, of being where the soul comes into these skin and bones and says, where the hell am I? Mm. And then we have that moment at about 18, 18 months old where the child recognizes himself as the child, right? You know, that, that famous experiment with the rouge on the child's forehead mm. when prior to 18 months, they, they point at the mirror when rouge gets put on their forehead. And at about 18 months, they start pointing at their own forehead, which mm. is a scientific awareness of, from my interpretation and my work and my teachers of uh, my journey is about the soul buying into the skin and bones saying, okay, I'm here now, let's go game on. All right, I get it. Um, season two is just about the season of doing, which is what most of us do unconsciously, unfortunately, throughout our life, which is going from A to B, A to B, A to B, work to work, home, occasional C mixed in in the form of vacation as the shamans will tell us in ancient wisdom is literally sleepwalking through life. Mm. It's very, very sad, but unfortunately it's many of our existence. Mm. Then there's just season three, which is the season of waking mm. where we get our asses kicked. Mm. I think yeah. that's a technical term yeah. and it wakes us up. <laughs> it wakes us up from our sleepwalking. Yeah. It gives yeah. us the possibility of being here, yeah. literally being here for the first time again, yeah. since when we were born to, Think about, you know, what, and you, this is exactly through the, through what you take it through the course. So yeah. to reimagine why we're here to come back home to ourselves, mm. come back home to that special pattern of our being and really explore the, explore what it would be like if we took the risk to be able to be who we are in the world, mm. right? And then when we do that to the degree that we do, which takes a lot of courage and our culture doesn't understand initiations and wants us to get back to being productive and add to the GDP and yeah. all that kind of good stuff. But when we do move on, we get to the fourth season and that's what I call the, the season of living whole. Mm. And that's where we're aligned with our soul, our being and our doing are in alignment and we make good music. That's when mm. like the athletes call flow. Yeah. Religion yeah. calls it grace. One yeah. of my favorite terms in the world is Wu Wei. Which, is yeah, a yeah. Term, which literally means doing, not doing. Um, and so that's why what we do in our, in our workshop is we take people through and we say, talk about your third season intimately and how it informed mm. you to become more yeah. you. And then in your fourth season, then we break out again second. Yes. And we say, now break out in the fourth season and talk about when you were in the flow, when you felt it, yeah. you know, that you were in tune. What did that feel like? share with your partner and then we come back and share it all together. But I learned a lot from you and I really appreciate it. That's, that's the, that's the connection there. That's what yeah, spirit is. That, well, that's extraordinary. I, and so uh, what is your initial, how did you get on this path? What, what, how did you go through your seasons? Because, you know, oftentimes we actually go through our own process. When I, um, when I wrote my book, um, before my cancer, this book, Leading Well from Within. Um, it, I've got to get that. I have not read yeah. that yet. I will get oh, it. I will, I, will, I will send you a copy. Uh, just send me your address. And, okay, well, guess what? One's coming back at you. Okay, beautiful, Perfect. beautiful. So um, um, that was initially born out of my, my superpower. That actually emerged when I hit the wall going through medical training. I went through a clinical depression. I went through stress, overwhelm, and burnout, and I made sense of that. And then I realized it was, it was very powerful learning. And, and I was also blessed to have entered the world of conscious capitalism and then also served in leadership of the Academy of Integrative Health and Medicine. And I had frameworks to integrate that with this idea that the idea about, about 
it's a fractal, you know, so, you know, this is a, the sunflower is a fractal, that the idea is if we want to lead well in the world, we first have to understand how do we lead well inside ourselves? Fundamentally, how do we navigate our cabbage? <laughs> in your language, how do we navigate our ego, our stress, uncertainty and self doubt, so we can stay focused on what really matters in the world? Right. And by doing that, we can have influence, leadership's an act of influence, and we can inspire and have influence with others. Actually, at the end of my introduction, I end, share a personal vow. And it was very similar to what you're describing of living your US you. I've just did a beautiful interview with Julie Riesler. Um, uh, just, just, she's just a light in the world as well. And I shared with her um, my personal vow, which is I vow to live my life from home. I vow to live my life from home. When I get lost, come back home even stronger. And then from there to inspire others to live from home too. And that's the heart, that's the heart of my work. And so I'm curious, you know, uh, the value of helping other people transform is often we first claim transformation for ourselves in in some area of either challenge, pain, or aspiration mm. to be able to then give that transformation away. So could you share a little bit, a, a brief story that may be encapsulated in, in your book? What was your nexus of awakening? So uh, I would be happy to, with this introduction, you'll get why this is so funny because we, everybody has a, has a laugh when I say I'll be brief. <laughs> so okay. I, will, I, will, I will do my best okay. to be brief with the story, but I'm so glad you picked up over here because with all of the interviews and speaking that I do, um, that's the first time someone's asked me that question, mm -hmm. which I'm yeah. not surprised. Yeah. Um, so let me do my best, but I think it'll be rich for, for us and for, for your work you're doing in the world because that is my work. Mm. There's different languaging about being home first and then being that light out in the world yeah. to show others that that is a beautiful way to be mm. and others can be that way. And, and in fact, there's no other way to be when, during this precious right. time that we're alive. Yes. Um, yes. So, okay. So this and this came from the same place, which is on the other side of the world in Nepal. Mm. So I went, um, so first thing I will say is that as you know, wakings can be progressive. Yes. You know, we like to put things in boxes like it was one thing and then this happened. Yeah. But there are major ones in our life. And I'm going to weave you through a couple that happened to me. Hopefully, I think I can do it in less than five minutes. Does that sound beautiful. good? Yeah, beautiful. Perfect. I'm giving myself some brief boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can send off the alarm when, when I violate, okay? Yeah. Don't start yet, though. Don't start yet. <laughs> 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 okay, so here we go. Following my dreams, feeling some things going on in me while I was doing my capital work and Wall Street and, and doing some high finance stuff, feeling healing in my hands and healing through my body and not understanding what it was, surrendered, went to a three-year energy medicine associated with a hospital while I was still working. I showed up the first day and I was like, wait a minute, this is a trick because I was waiting for a whole bunch of just books and it was an experiential uh, process. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, how, oh, long, ago, how long ago was this? Like, just, just by painting a timeline for this um, if, roughly. Mm, uh, 2000. Mm, beautiful. Okay. Somewhere around there, you know, some ballpark, give or take okay. three years. So, um, that led me down this road of following my dreams and, and committing to making sure that I was myself yeah. as much as possible. And that, as we all know, is as the, um, as the Taoists would say, or in Tai Chi, you know, you need to learn how to unlearn more than anything else yes. and yes. let go of things and old paradigms of thought. Um, and so through that process, um, a couple things happened. One is I did one of the hardest and most beautiful things in my life, which was I actually followed my dreams and moved to a small island in the Caribbean with my family, ah. one by two island. And I was following these really cool signs, which led me to one of my dream my whole life was to have an island where people could come, mm. to remember who they were, mm. and to live their life fully. Ever since I was a little kid, I knew yeah. that dream. 
Um, and so, of course, during my 20s, I thought I had to own the island, you know, mm. like cabbage again. Um, but anyway, so I go down to this island. Um, on almost a whim, I go down, I, I get down there. I am the, um, ended up being, other than doing my work in the, in the uh, capital world down there as well, uh, I was doing work as the resident shaman of the Keneal Bay Resort, which is the Rockefeller Resort on St. John. So my clients were the externally, you know, powerful, wealthy people. You know, I would obviously never mention any names, but most of them you'd know by name or the very powerful people in the world uh, yeah. around the capital side or people on the silver screen and things like that. So um, those are my clients. I was down there doing that work, learning a lot about myself, helping many other people. Um, having teachers appear to me from all over the world. Um, finally, there was this one event where I um, ended up going down, going to the other side of the world to study with shamans. Mm -hmm. And the year before that or so, I didn't even really know what the hell a shaman was. I mean, I knew the word, but that was about it. This led me on this extraordinary journey to Nepal, mm -hmm. which I um, trained uh, and was initiated in the Tamang tradition, which is a Tibetan form of shamanism. Uh, and um, during, um, during that time, I was also getting a lot of national press. I was on the cover of the Washington Post magazine called The Shaman of Wall Street. Um, Hollywood wanted to do movies. Most of it was entirely disingenuous. I didn't really want to have anything to do with it, so we waved that off. Um, but there was a lot of stuff happening in the external world while that was happening internally with me. Headdress, initiation, calling in the spirits, a conch. Mm in ritual and falling in love with my rational mind of, you know, the, the uh, paradox of ritual, right? Mm. It's not about dogma and it has nothing to do with rituals, but rituals can help get you to a place. Mm. Mm. So I'm sitting on the other side of the world a week before I'm supposed to come home. That was about a month journey down there. I had gone through- Can you put that into perspective? Now what, roughly what year or I just want to get paint a picture of evolution. I think it was 2005. Beautiful. So five years later. Yeah. Yeah. It's right around 2005. Later. So maybe, you know, three years later from when I went down. Yeah. Um, went through initiation, woke up the next morning. I was a freaking train wreck. Mm. I was like, man, what the hell's going on here? I thought I was supposed to be enlightened. I feel like I like every negative thought I had ever thought before in my life or even not even thought of was like a fire hose coming on me. Mm. I didn't know what the hell was going on. Obviously a little bit naive about initiation at that point in my life, because that's yeah. kind of how it works. Um, but a week before we were supposed to go home, I'm sitting in front of this little shaman, this diminutive little four foot five guy, Samaran. Mm. He'd been with us the whole time, dressed in the same brown clothes, like a wisp of a cloud. You never knew he was there, right? I'm sitting in front of him and I, we had been traveling all over and, and there was a lot of shamans that were saying, you're a true shaman, you have shaman in your blood. That was like the, the thing that was coming over and over to me. Uh, then I'm sitting in front of this guy and I'm my six foot two frame, trying to hold you know this position in front of him, sweat pouring off my back. All I could think about was how can I lay down in front of this guy and pull it off as something sacred? Because I was so just aching from the inside out. Shamans on the other side of the world for the listeners, what they do is they'll just wait for the spirits to enter. So you've got all the incense and all the ritual in front. And they sit there and chant until the spirits enter. And when the spirits enter, then they communicate with you. So mm -hmm. that's what I was waiting for. He didn't speak a word of English. He had a translator with him. And he starts screaming at me, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Screaming at me at the top of his lung. Mm -hmm. Finally, his uh, interpreter says, Samaran wants you to straight up, sit up straight, stop hiding. Mm. So I went, okay, there we go. And I realized, boy, he didn't. And I said, listen, I'm here to get more power so I can give back in the world. That's what I said to him. Didn't say anything to me. Clearly he didn't need to hear my, uh, my, my words to know mm. my poisons. And then he says to me, he says, you're a shaman. You're a true shaman. You have shaman in your blood. You have shaman in your heritage but you have not honored your heritage. You have not honored your bloodline. You are mm. not in your power. How dare you not be in your power? Mm. Mm. And I got chills through my body because I knew exactly what he was saying. Mm. And I'm adopted and I had never found my birth parents. Mm. Mm. So I knew in that moment that I was on my next pilgrimage and I actually left early. I never quit anything. 
but man, I was done. I knew I had to, part of me knew I had to do another pilgrimage before I could finish. The other part of me felt like I was quitting and upset about what I was doing, but I had to leave. I couldn't take anymore. Mm. And I came back. I found my birth mother. Um, mm. I found my, my journey through my parents. It was amazing through mm. that process after, you know, when, um, through that process, what happened to me is then I had my final, not final, but a big awakening, which mm. was a big breakdown, which is basically, I ended up flat on my back in a hospital mm. and I was stripped of everything. As the shamans will say, you know, dismembered, completely uh, dismembered, ripped apart to my core so I could be built back up again. Yeah. And like I, I kid around sometimes, sometimes I'm a big project, so I need a lot of help. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, for context, because I know you're going to ask, that was probably 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a little yeah. bit more. And um, I spent the next year of my life in the most um, excruciating pain of depression. Yeah. I've never experienced it since. Thank God. Yeah. I never experienced it before. I'd worked with thousands of people who were deep in depression and suicidal, but I'd never experienced it myself until mm. then. And at the same time, Daniel, meanwhile, by the way, I'm traveling around talking to top banks, independent broker dealers, working with Nobel Prize winner laureate um, for modern portfolio theory, you know, doing all that work somehow in the meantime. And I was tapped in at the highest level possible. Mm. I could see everything. I knew everything. There was no veil between this uh, time. And that was not constant. It would come yeah. and go just yeah. as the depression was, but that was for my year period mm. until, until it snapped. And then um, here I am. So that's not done in five minutes. I apologize to you and the viewers. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> well, that's the best I'm able to pull off. Well, well, that was well worth it. That's a to honor your journey. That is just extraordinarily rich. And there are so many, I think that the viewers, you listening would, I'm imagining you would connect with a lot. I certainly connect with your story as well. You know, particularly that what you're saying about awakenings, that awakenings are continual unfoldings. And oftentimes there's a critical period where you get to that part some people call it the night of the dark soul or the season of the dark soul for you it was a year of depression which is where we incubate and um, rebuild ourselves from connecting into a fabric of alignment what you were talking about this resonant underlying fabric of for me i call it conscious loving energy the, I, I sense this, Einstein asked one of the biggest questions, is one of the biggest questions we can ask ourselves is do we fundamentally live in a hostile or a friendly universe? Right. And so I, through all these synchronicities, I know, I trust we live in a fundamentally friendly universe that's made up of the fabric of conscious loving energy. And so when yeah. we come into alignment with that, and so sometimes, when we're when we, when you're talking about at the beginning of the call, you're talking about being out of tune. It's being out of tune, and what we're out of tune with is essentially that fabric. And when you come back into the fabric, it's unbelievable the amount of synchronicities that emerge, and you know the blessings, the blessings of our lives that that um, that emerge through. So I, it's you know, I'm extraordinary, I'm, isn't it? I'm, yeah, it's extraordinary. And I'm mesmerized. The reason why I'm so mesmerized about your story is it's, it's a confirmation. Uh, Daniel, can, I, can I have you pause for one second? I just want to do this for the listeners in case, just to put an explanation mark on what you just yes, said. Please, please. In case any of your, and in case any of these people who, for you right now, who's listening to this, who is in depression. Yes. I want you to understand something deeply that, that, that Daniel just said, and I'm going to say in a different way to make sure we, you get it. You are not depressed. You are being stripped of everything you thought you were. So you feel like you're nothing. Yeah. That my friend is everything. Yes. So please take that deep into your bones right now, because you're one step away as I talk about going into the fourth season and we need you. Yeah. So this is very selfish. Okay. This is not me trying to rescue you because you feel bad and you can hear me right now. Cause I'm talking directly to you. It's not me rescuing you. It's because we need you. 
Yes. And you're one step away and our culture does not recognize that. And you are listening to me now because maybe the first time you've heard it framed that way between myself and Daniel. So I just wanted to get that across, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you, Lars. That was said with such beautiful compassion. I have... I have experienced my depression as the ultimate gift that I would never trade for anything in the world. What, what I was come out there, the other side, and I know it's scary, if, particularly if you're in depression for the first time, because you don't know what's on the other side of this thing. As you go through it, it's incredibly scary. And I, Lawrence and I want to just provide hope and comfort because um, as you lean into this with your learning, asking you know, deeply considering the possibility that you may be going through this depression because you have something meaningful to learn for yourself first and then for you to provide a gift from that place to the world, but for yourself first. And in that place, the only thing that makes sense when you're depressed is to bring, invite first a sense of self-compassion and understanding into your life to allow you to do that work of meaning. So that, you know, for me, when I found, you know, the gift of opening into that place and actually realizing that there was a larger meaning to this and then finding some kindness for myself that opened a space for me to do more of this work. I, you know, I, Lawrence and I, I feel that we, we wish that for you too. We really wish that for you too. Absolutely. It's, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it sounds weird, but it's like a celebration of compassion. Yeah. Right. When you're in depression, it is because you are about to give birth to yourself again. Yeah. Beautiful. And, and, and our culture has it so backwards. Yeah. So, you know what? Don't listen to anybody else. <laughs> listen to Daniel and me right now. <laughs> we know a couple of things about this. And you are almost there. And we're sending you all this incredibly right. beautiful love and blessings out of time for you listening to us right now. Yeah. And I rudely interrupted you, Daniel. So, do you remember what you were going to say? Well, uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, I'm 23 um, sessions into my radiation therapy, so I don't remember much <laughs> of everything. Oh, I doubt that. I doubt that. I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you, and, and it's perfect because nothing has been scripted on this call. It's, it's all emergent. So whatever, whatever has come has come from another world. This, what a place of, whether I, whatever your name is for this from I call it the field my wife calls it the force together we're saying this is the force field I don't know do you have a name for this larger mystery what 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 do you or you could call it God you know the do you have a name for this um, mystery you know Danny I call it all sorts of different names but I think most importantly you know the the act of naming actually limits it ah so beautiful it, beautifully so said it, in our humanness, we need to put labels on things because it helps us um, navigate. Yeah, beautiful. Um, but if we do name it, I think, you know, one of the most important things is as we name, we release. Yes. Because we know that the, con okay, so we'll give another Einstein, right? Yeah. No problem is solved by the same consciousness that created it. Yes. So therefore, since we have such limitations, go back inside this cabbage here, right? It's, yeah. just, it's just an organ. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's all it is. It's not us. Yes. And so as we name something from the organ, let's not expect that we really got it nailed. Yeah, beautiful. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. Beautifully right. said. So I'm, I'm mindful of our time right now. It's been precious time. It feels like this is um, the opening of future conversations. That's, um, it better be. You better believe yes. it. Oh, so I would want to, you know, invite you to to close in whichever way is um, feels meaningful to you. What would be, uh, um, how would you like to put at least on this just this chapter of our conversation in a way that, you know, honors our experience together, but also honors, you know, ultimately it's all about you, the listener. So, uh, what are, what are your what's in your heart to Part of appreciation to um, wrap up. So let me move out quickly what's inside my head, which is basically telling people that, you know, once that you are here for a reason. Yeah. And that there is nothing else that matters more than that. Yes. And if you can just close your eyes for a moment and envision a life when, you know, how like in, in the East, people um, use the greetings of namaste, right? Which is <sighs> loosely translated as I see God in you. 
Um, imagine a greeting where you greet every single person and you say, Daniel, man, I know you're special. You've got a gift in the world. How can I help you live that? I just get all excited about living in a world like that. So as many of you listeners who can begin that, um, you know, even if it's just your intention when you greet people, you don't have to say it out loud, but just think it. Yes. Um, it's a great way to start the world. We only need, you know, five to 10% of us to catch on and then we transform the whole world that way. And what a beautiful mm. world it would be. That's in my head. What's in my heart mm. is to my new friend and brother, Daniel. And there's two things. Number one is um, working with you, however that unfolds yeah. with what I talk about is when we're living in the fourth season, there's hot spots. There's things that matter beyond our rational thinking. Yes. And what I tell people to do is just put a flag in it. You don't have to own it. You don't have to understand it all. Just put a flag in it as a clue later on. Um, and I'm putting a flag in this conversation with us about us doing almost the exact same workshop and mm. what that can mean for us. And so yes. in my head right now, it means that I think to whatever degree we should think about collaborating, mm. wherever that is, however that looks, totally surrender to the outcome, but that's the best I can think of right now. But there's something there for us and I wanna make it conscious. That's yeah. number one. Yeah. So one of the things I'd like to extend to you, Lawrence, um, I this living well from within initiative that's existing right now in this YouTube channel, mm. I've been invited to house this initiative within the Global Wellness Institute which gives us the opportunity to convene. And I'm convening a number of, if, if you look in the playlist, I, uh, I trust you will find I'm convening a number of extraordinary leaders who can uh, create um, healing, growth, and flourishing wellness to elevate humanity on a global scale. And I would love you to, to um, I'd love you to join this coalition as well. So we could actually in the crucible of um, expert facilitation with our using the exchange approach that's integrated with appreciative inquiry that we can come together to actually do this. None of us can do this alone, but collectively we can actually move the needle in healing the soul of the world. Absolutely. So count on me, whatever that looks like. I'm here. I'm following my hot spots from my friend David Cooper Ryder to, you know, back back to you and this whole workshop. And, um, you know, and I promise there were two things. That's the first thing. Yes. Second thing I want to close with is a, um, a moment of uh, me here with you, sending you all of the power and energy I can give you for blessing and healing and light and love inside of your body and around your body. And I'd like to spend a few minutes doing that if I could as we close. Please, I welcome that. And I'm going to actually um, ask if I could smudge you, which is a ritual um, in the shamanic yeah. tradition for clearing energy Please. and being with you that way. Daniel, can I ask you to put your hands, rub your hands together for a few minutes? Just get some nice energy going in them. Can, can I invite also, I would love to invite everybody listening. If you have suffering in your life, I am so deeply touched by what Lawrence is offering here for me, for my healing. I wanna offer you whatever Lawrence is doing, offering me, please take this into your heart as well, that what he's just offered with the smudging, with the hands. Please, I wanna share this. I take this, drink this in as the deepest, I take it to heart as the best medicine on my healing journey. I, I wanna invite you into the same process too. So please, whatever Lawrence is offering me, I'm gonna invite you to do the same. Thank you, Daniel. Let's come back to you and to the listeners now. So if you would just um, imagine for a moment that I'll uh, just play a game, make it light. Sometimes this stuff can be too heavy. 
-hmm. So play a game for a minute with me as a listener that if there's something in your body that doesn't need to be there anymore, that uh, it was just removed and just feel, play this game with me and just feel gratitude. Take a couple deep breaths, breathe in some light, let go of any stress or cognitive kind of confusion around how could that be? Just is. And rub your hands together. Get some nice heat going. And then blow into them a little bit of love and then put Daniel, I want you to put uh, one of your hands on the back uh, left side. Sometimes I get them confused in the screen and spiritual, but on the back part of your head, please. You'll, there it is right there. That's the place that I was seeing right there. Yeah, yeah a little, little bit up. I can't see on the side. No, 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 not that high. There, that's it. And just um, give yourself that beautiful self-love mm -hmm. and just feel that. So for your listeners at home, while Daniel's doing that, I want you to find the spot on your body that needs a little bit extra love. Whenever you remove something, something always wants to fill its place. Mm -hmm. And so now that it's removed, it's your turn to fill that with what your choice is and fill that with white light, with beautiful self-love, mm -hmm. with compassion and a good dose of playfulness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just enjoy it. And when you're ready, come back and feel free to rinse and repeat. <laughs> okay, I love it. I love and it. one of the things I want to say to people is that if you have let go of something and you feel that you have let go of it, and Daniel, this is for you specifically, is be consistently mindful of when you go to that spot. Yeah. Kind of like you have a raw wound or, and it will take yeah. in whatever you give it. Yes. Um, to whenever you touch that spot, to go to it um, with love and with light. Ah, beautiful reminder. Mm. Lawrence. Oh, what a gift. What a gift. Uh, I love and appreciate you, brother. Uh, I love and appreciate you and feel so blessed about the time we've had here together. Um, thank you for thank you for dialing me into your world. <laughs> yeah, we're in, we're in the same world. We're in the, we're in the, the fabric of the mystery. Um, and, you know, we're all in this together with you listening. So I hope this has served you well too. I hope this, I hope you have been able to receive this deep love and healing. And you now can feel that in your heart and radiate that love and healing, pay it forward to touch your families, touch your communities and touch the, this larger, um, um, world community that we're living in right now that needs healing more than ever. Mm. Mm. And don't forget that we're all one. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful place to end. Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. Love you, brother. Love you. So good to be with you, my yeah. friend. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Gorgeous. Yeah. Until next time. Indeed. Indeed. Until next time.